trainee vicars write to the archbishops and bishops and tell them to stop do not carry on with the prayers or blessings for same sex couples two vicars have got banned for life for not keeping that in their pants sad sad stories we better check ourselves people and i've always said this where if you go to the worst places in the world you'll find a catholic nun and in gaza there's no exception <laughs> Hi, welcome to the channel. My name is Rev Dan. I'm a vicar in the Church of England and this is Rev Dan's Roundup where I look at what's happening in the news and bring it back to a church perspective and how we respond to some of those things. Today, the prayers of love and faith that are going to the General Synod in the Church of England have come out. I'm not really going to comment on them at the moment. There's 108 pages to read. I've read through. I've got some thoughts already. I've been reading other people's thoughts and reactions. I'm going to take a little while to digest that uh, and, and do a response video about my thoughts, what other people are thinking on this. Um, there's there's things going to come out from both sides on it. I, I know it's a big thing, uh, but please bear with me on that. We will get into that. But let me start with this article from Christian Today where... Orthodox ordinands plead with bishops to prevent fracture of the church. Now, when I did my video on the 11 faithful bishops, which you can watch here, uh, coming out saying, you know, we don't fully support the House of Bishops, you know, the House of Bishops is divided. And um, I also mentioned about the uh, Orthodox ordinands who put out a letter, and I didn't go through their letter. Um, I, what I talked about was two of them put their names to it, uh, Anna, my, Anna my, Mayo, sorry, butchering your name there, Anna Mayo and uh, Matthew Porter. And 78 ordinance did not put their name to it. Um, they, the, I, I, I'm now aware it's gone up to above 100, well done. But what I commented on in the video was how can we be in a church where you ordinance feel quite exposed because if you're an incumbent like me, you've got a lot more protection. But um, ordinance don't. So, you know, it'd be, it could be very easy to stop them going through their training, finding the curacy. There's, there's a whole multitude of things. And so they feel quite exposed um, in put, not putting their names down. And, and the question was, how can we be in a church, especially if we're a church saying that we're, we have two different views on uh, say, six blessings, um, but feeling that you're exposed and if you put a name there, they, you're going to be blocked. And, and that's not right. And, and, and to be honest, really, that does need addressing. And I think that bishops need to come out and publicly state that if you hold a different view, whether you're discerning, that whether you're at the start and just going to feel called and you're speaking to uh, people about it, whether you're actually in a theological college in curacy or actually it, it, as an incumbent like myself, you should be free to be able to speak about uh, a different view because, um, you know, uh, those of us who hold an orthodox view will, will say those who have, have a progressive view is a different view and a different view from the church. And, you know, those two conversations are out there, but um, it, it's very sad that these ordinances feel that they can't put their names publicly. Um, and, and so, uh, you know, I know this channel is watched uh, by people who could have that influence. Could you not come as bishops to say, you know, it's not like that. We're not We're not going to do that. We're not going to come after you. If you are traditional Catholic or evangelical or who hold a different view, no matter where you are in the process, from the discernment to actually being incumbent, we're not going to, as it, in the, the phrase, come after you. We're not going to block you. It, this is not like that. And I, I really hope it's not like that at all so they put out this letter and i will do um a separate video on this i think this letter deserves to get in a bit more than i can do here uh, but um you know th this is the first time uh, that the ordinance have come into uh, this conversation you know people at theological college and they go there for two or three years usually 
depending on how, what they, which course they're doing. Um, uh, you know, you, you're in a different bubble, as it were, and um, you, you're there training, write a lot of essays and doing other things. So to bring their voice in actually is a quite a big thing, really, um, because you don't have the time to come together. You're all at different colleges around uh, England, and so you, you don't usually meet people from other colleges, to be honest. It's quite tribal. You know, I went to Wycliffe, and they go, oh, you went to Wycliffe. Well, I meet someone from Wycliffe. I went, yeah, you went to Wycliffe. If I meet someone who went to another college, like, oh, yeah, I know that college, but you're not from well, my college. You know, there's that bit of dro joking and stuff. But this <laughs> this is even cross tribal lines of, uh, of colleges, and they come together and produce this letter. And it's a big thing. It doesn't. It's not quick to produce a letter. So um, just not getting into a, a video that I will do on this, but they say in this article, this letter will hopefully do two things. Raise the voice of those who have been silent thus far and reassure other orthodox candidates, ordinance and deacon curates uh, that they are not alone. Together uh, we will make our voice heard. So, um, and this is key because their voices need to come out because people aren't coming through training. People are uh, in that discernment stage and even in the ordinance stage, you can you just walk away. People are walking away and saying, I, you know, the church has gone too far and I'm not going through. So we'll get in less orthodox uh, ordinance trained be vicars coming through. So their voices need to be heard and it feel, it should, they f should feel that they could be able to speak. Years ago, a few years ago, when I was a curate, there was a letter being signed, I think, to our bishops. And... Uh, and I was advised by many people, do not sign this. And I really wanted to sign it, but they said, don't sign this because be, because of this reason. And so I would say, in a sense, looking back against my better judgment, but maybe it was good judgment and it was good advice not to sign it. I didn't sign it. I, I, I supported it, but I didn't sign it um, because, because of this and because of the advice. And so this is the feeling that is out there. And I think this really needs to be addressed, and, and it should be addressed at General Synod quite publicly by the Archbishops uh, or the Archbishop of Canterbury, that if he hears of this uh, being uh, or Orthodox ordinance curates, whoever, that, that they're being um, held back in any way or come after in any way, that he will address that and, and he should make people feel safe. So I'll get into this video, I'll get into this letter in a, in a video in the coming weeks uh, and uh, and see what what they're saying. A Bible verse this week comes from the letter of James and um, from the whole chapter I could have taken any amount of advice that he is given us by taking it from verse 7, so James verse 4, 7. Submit yourself therefore to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. Such a battle, isn't it? We've got to uh, submit ourselves to God fully, fully, fully. And the devil who's prowling around so much at the moment, it really, really feels like that as well, uh, will flee from us if we keep our eyes fixed on God. Keep your eyes fixed on God. What else is there to say? So again, from Christianity Today, headline, Christians ready to take legal action if conversion therapy bill tramples on religious freedom. So this is the conversion therapy bill bill that is coming through um, the government, uh, through parliament, and um, they, they say, uh, in, in the Christian Institute say, by moving ahead with this bill at all, the government is wading into very dangerous territory. Gay and trans people are being protected, quite rightly, and absolutely quite rightly, for verbal and physical abuse by existing law, since the, these things are outlawed. Uh, what, what is it that this week's bill will seek to criminalise? Um, and and what is potentially coming up is that actually, uh, as um, the commentator on here says, Jane Azane says she wants gentle, non-coercive prayer to be criminalised as part of the bill. But it's obvious that to most people that gentle, non-coercive prayer is not conversive therapy. So, you know, we're talking about steps. We're saying, yes, absolutely, people should be protected and they should not be abused, you know, in, in, in any way. Uh, but you know, if someone, the danger is with this bill, and this is what they're 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 saying, uh, needs protecting. If someone comes and says, you know, I'm feeling same-sex attracted, I, I I believe you know, 
what's written in the Bible, and I and I want to stay single. I don't believe in sex outside marriage, and you know. Uh, but pray for me. That prayer then becomes something that could be potentially illegal, and yet even so, if, if someone asks you to pray, so you know you can imagine that um, you're in your local church, um, and someone's saying, you know, I, I just want you to pray. I want you to pray God's, you know, uh, whatever it might be, whatever the prayer might be, and and someone could hear that prayer. Someone could, you know. That the person who's asked you to pray the prayer could change their mind, and and you could be prosecuted uh, for for praying a a a prayer saying that you're trying to convert, uh, use conversion therapy on this person, and it's and it's abuse. Well, actually, you're just praying for you know something that you think is is quite innocent. It's, it's dangerous, dangerous ground. And so, what's going to happen is someone comes to you and says, you know, I'm feeling so so attracted, and I want you to pray for me. You're just going to go no. I, I can't. I'm not. I'm not even going to go there. Um, it's. Would you? Would you? You know, faith, some faithful people say, "Well, I, I'm absolutely going to pray for you." It's a pastoral situation. You're asking for prayer, but what if that prayer is perceived as conversion therapy? If this goes through, so um, the Christian Institute are saying, you know, this can't happen, and if you do. Uh, we need to go to the court and get this sorted out. What do you think? Put your comment below. So two sad stories now, and, and, and two stories that involve vicars and vulnerable people. You know, this is this this is to vicars. This is to me. It's like you're going to have vulnerable people, uh, whether you're a, ma a male vicar with vulnerable women or a, a female vicar with vulnerable men, and they're vulnerable, and we can't abuse our position because of our wants and needs and. And these two vicars, both in York Diocese, have been, uh, they were, they're struck off. They've been gone down the closed discipline measure. And um, because they take took advantage of all, of all people. And, you know, in that, they're vulnerable at the time because stuff has happened. And then, um, because they've been taken advantage of, and they, you know, and, and they've got to deal with that on top as well. Especially uh, from someone they went to for help. And so, quite rightly, they, they, they've they gone through the process. They, they're both uh, been found guilty and um, so this uh, guy Reverend John Young uh, is a second priest from York Diocese he's admitted to in inappropriate con conduct and banned for life um, and, and he was he had a um, a relationship where she said he was old enough to be uh, my grandfather so um, she was I think she had taken an overdose um, and he took advantage of her in a pastoral situation and it's sad it's sad you know the, the damage that people can do uh, to to people for their own satisfaction and, and, and this guy this John Young uh, had been um, you know he he's, he's done quite a lot in the diocese he, he, he was on a broadcast on Radio 4 um, in 2012 a, a diocese newsletter described him as an out standing communicator the christian message you know he's um, he even wrote for a, a book review for the church times and uh, he was a gross ghostwriter for the archbishop of york uh, lord centimeter one and so he he had this outward ministry but his heart inside and i know we all can potentially fall and it's all there but it's fighting the desires but it's, it's not actually going through and the worst part is taking advantage of a, a vulnerable person so uh, he's been struck off for life and then we got this other guy Martin Baldock uh, he admitted two counts of misconduct um, he was married uh, and he's been banned for life as well um, for again uh, having inappropriate relationships uh, and uh, vulnerable people were once again in uh, involved um, so you know we, we've got to check ourselves we've got to make sure as clergy um, that we are we, we, we've got accountability around us that uh, we're open about uh, our meetings and relationships that we're, we're, we're open when we with the accountability as well because if we don't um, you, it's just too easy to hide and when you're hiding it then no one's going to uh, challenge you uh, and uh, uh, hold that and again um, these people who are vulnerable who come to someone to help uh, have had that trust let down 
it is amazing in a clergy college how you can help someone. People will t open up and tell you so much. There's, there's a trust, and that trust is broken. And everybody who reads these articles, you know, uh, will also distrust the clergy, the good clergy, for the people who have done this. So check yourselves, uh, uh, fellow priests. Have you got appropriate uh, provision around you to, to make sure that it's going to make you, even if you want to do, very hard not to do this. And if you have got those feelings that you want to, seek help as well. This is a cool story. I love this one. Priest baptized grown up sons by full immersion after they come to faith. So this vicar um, who's called Timothy Sumster uh, baptized two of his three sons. Uh, Luke, who's 32, and Joel is 26 uh, in a swim pool near the church. And um, he decided they decided as a family not to baptize their children. Instead saying, you know, when you grow up, uh, you have that choice and then he gets to baptise them as adults. That's a really special thing. Um, and so what's also great in this article for the Church Times, he says that in the course of his ministry there, he's been there 22 years, I've now baptised 28 new disciples by full immersion so uh, who had not been baptised by children. So he's having a great ministry there. No wonder his kids have come to faith as well and followed through. Uh, well done. Well done. I think such a special um thing to do to be able to baptize your children but you know uh, baptizing your children as they're older when they're proclaiming Jesus Christ as Lord you know instead of doing it as as when the babies like I did um, you know it is a great thing you know I would say maybe one day I might confirm my daughter and my son but I doubt if I'll ever be a bishop so from a happy story to a sad story and uh, you know I've done a video about this before in the news Indy Gregory judge rules to remove life support from seven month old baby against parents with wishes. And this is where we get into this, this moral uh, dilemma in, in the country. So uh, this baby is seven months old. Um, the parents want to keep her alive, uh, Indy Gregory, and, um, but there's a legal battle. And um, the Christian, in, Christian legal center support the parents as they plan to appeal but the, the you know it goes to a judge it goes to a judge who def, who decides whether this child's life is is uh, continued or not it comes to a legal battle a legal battle for a child uh, their life and and it isn't about a legal battle this is the sanctity of life and and we take that god-given life and, and we say, well, this life is not worth it. They're not worth the money that we're going to pay on keeping this child alive or, or trying uh, to keep the child alive. And it's, it's absolutely horrendous that we've lost that morality. You know, this, people should be outraged um, about this. That, that, you, know, that they're, you know, the Nottingham University Hospital's NHS Trust argued at a private high school high court hearing that discontinuing the life support is in the baby's best interests how can it be in the baby's best interest you know should her condition worsen um and we as churches have to really speak about these things uh, and there's a whole load of ethics here there's a whole load of theology here there's a whole load of uh, moral uh, morality here and you know and then they're, they're bringing in a law and the law will supersede all of this and this baby poor Indy uh, will probably uh, lose her life because a judge has ruled that by law she should die so I love this and I've always said this because I heard this years ago uh, go, go to the worst places in the world and you'll find a Catholic nun. And so uh, Premier Christian News uh, tells us uh, this with this article, we will not go. Gaza nuns refuse to leave in order to support those unable to escape the region. So it's, it's awful over in Gaza at the moment. And um, there's bombs raining down and many uh, innocent civilians are being uh, killed and injured. And those uh, nuns the Sisters of the Rosary, and also they say that uh, the um, 
Mary Teresa's, uh, Mother Teresa's uh, uh, group are there as well, uh, that Mother Teresa's sisters are also here, and they're helping people with multiple disabilities and, and the elderly, and there's, you know, and they say, we need medicines, many hospitals are just destroyed, and where would we go, where would we go? They will stay there uh, and, and, you know, risking their lives to help those, because we, sometimes we get in our minds that everyone, you know, that people are fit and healthy and they're moving, but there's people with severe disabilities, there's people who are just too elderly to move, and these faithful Catholic nuns are there serving and uh, risking their own lives. Yes, they know that they trust and love the Lord, and, you know, if they lose their life, they're, they're with God. You know, it's it's not a, you know, they, it's a win situation in that sense, but they won't leave their calling. This is their calling, and that's why I said, uh, that thing and it sticks with me it, it goes to the worst places in the world and you'll find a Catholic nun there and I truly believe that and they're living this out they're truly living their faith out and, and so not only pray for that situation over in Israel and Gaza and the West Bank but also pray for these faithful Catholic nuns even if you're not Catholic if you just because they're they're doing uh, what they're called uh, to do and they're doing it faithfully faithfully and and, and they need our prayers so going back to abuse and this time not in the Church of England as we saw earlier with the two Church of England priests getting banned, but uh, but that was the sexual one. one. This was this is Vineyard uh, Church. They set aside thirty k to address substantiated uh, spiritual claims against Alan Scott. So um, Causeway Coast Vineyard and Vineyard Churches UK, an island of got fifteen thousand pounds each to address historical allegations of spiritual abuse directed at former pastor Alan Scott. So he's uh, been uh, a spiritual abuse and, it, and it's all come out um, and now they're raising money for helping people, uh, for counselling and, and for the legal battles and costs and things like that as well. And so this is another warning as well. It's not just sexual immorality, it's spiritual abuse, but in, being in a, a power and... Um, and then abusing spiritually. It's happened a lot. It happens in a lot of church. But people get in, you know. They get in and, and they want power. And that's what draws them, that they got this power. And so uh, other people have to pay for this, you know. This £30,000, uh, quite right, is going to be used for that. Uh, but, you know, we sh uh, we're better now getting systems in place to stop people like this getting through. But before, it was a lot easier. Um, but now that money that could have been used for real good, uh, and I'm not saying it isn't used for good, by the way, because helping these people who have been abused uh, spiritually and psychologically by him, they definitely need help. But you know what I mean? You know, it should never happen in the first place, and the money uh, used for, for other stuff. So uh, it's a real shame um, that this happened, and, and every denomination, and I think they are quite good, but they're always going to, people are going to get through, but they need to make it so difficult for people to get through and churches uh, and local churches need to if someone's like this doing a spiritual abuse it's I know it's very difficult to report it but there are ways uh, to report it and just report it get these people out uh, they should not be in the church they're damaging the church and they're damaging the Christian witness as well so if that's happening to you uh, get them reported so just uh, an update on the channel and, and developing going forward because this really does need to be said. Um, I always start my videos off uh, as Hi, welcome to the channel. My name's Rev Dan. I'm a vicar in the Church of England. And it's, it's too easy to put what I do online in, in what I do in my day job and say that they're the same. And in fact, I see them as very differently. Yes, I am a vicar in the Church of England. Yes, I do sit here in my office. But I see this very much as separate from my day job which is my first and primary calling to be a parish priest and I do this on the side in my spare time um, and I see it as a what we would probably call a six day ministry you know I work six days but you give 10% back in that kind of tithing way and, and my 10% I give back is is now via this channel it's grown into its own ministry and it helps so many people in, in, in different ways and it's just trying to make that separation clear yes because I do say it's a you know, a fact I am a vicar in the Church of England. Well, technically, I'm, I'm not a vicar, I'm, I'm a rector. Uh, but everyone knows us as vicars, that's why I say that. But I now I just want to make it a, a clean, easier to understand that my 
primary role is as a parish priest and that's what I do that's my first calling it's always going to be my priority and that's why sometimes I, I don't record uh, videos for my channel one channel because it's been busier I haven't recorded for four weeks uh, I will get back on it on my revved up channel but you know if I haven't got time I, I, my priority is to my parish so to help uh, with the separation and for this clear understanding um, my YouTube uh, is going to come under uh, beyond the return ministries now that's not it's not nothing official it's not a charity it's nothing nothing official um, it is just um, something that is a name um, it's a name that's going to be associated with something in the future and you have to watch out for what that is in the future I'm not going to let the cat out of the bag now uh, but uh, it's it's something that is a project that um, I, I I've wanted to do for years I haven't got time at the moment but hopefully in the future I will it's involved on along the lines of a book um, but that's all you're getting and so beyond the return ministries and my social media presence will be that and so just to try help uh, separate those two things out uh, again you know uh, I'm using uh, my uh, mono inglese which is what I use all of all my social media uh, the the name that I use, um, and th and that was always a temporary thing. It's not, nobody understands what mono inglés is. It's a name that I put together years ago. Um, but be uh, beyond return ministries is something that is you know it, it sounds more official. It sounds something uh, so, and as this grows, it sits into something quite nice, and it separates two out because it's it, you know makes my life easier doing that as well so that, that's just an update and uh, going forward so you'll see uh, more of uh, beyond the return ministries logo uh, coming up just popping up to help people uh, and myself to understand uh, that these are two separate things even though i am that person uh, that does these both um, i very much see it separate and i hope you understand so as we come to the end let us pray as we always do giving it all to god just pray, Heavenly Father, for these ordinands, uh, uh, curates who are now coming and, and, and speaking out against the archbishops and bishops in what they are doing. We pray, Lord, that uh, there isn't this power there and that they can feel free to publish their names. Lord, you are in control of all. And, and we pray for hearts to be changed and, and for bishops to publicly announce and archbishops that, that there isn't a culture like this in the church. Lord, and may that be a witness in itself to those who uh, don't yet know you. We pray for those victims of those uh, retired priests and, and, and the vineyard pastor as well. But we also pray for those uh, perpetrators for what they do. We pray for them to repent, to come back to you, to, to uh, or even come to know you, Lord. Wherever their hearts are, you know better than I do. But we pray for everybody involved in that situation, Lord. Uh, and, and, and family and friends who uh, are just also devastated. Lord, when this happens, where people fall, it, just, it doesn't just affect uh, a few people, it affects many. But we pray now to pray with those victims who, who never deserved what they had from these people who abused their power. And Lord, we just lift up to you these nuns in Gaza. We thank you for their faithful service. We ask for protection over them and, and the people that they're looking after who are the most vulnerable. Lord, may those people who, perhaps if they don't know Jesus, see Christ in these wonderful servants of yours. Amen. So that's it for this Rev Dan's Roundup. I, as I said, I will uh, produce a couple of videos. Uh, so that's it for Rev Dan's Roundup. As I said, I'll produce a couple of videos going forward about uh, what we're going through at the moment in the Church of England with the prayers of love and faith, with the, the whole living and love and faith process uh, looking at what the ordinance are saying looking what actually the prayers of love and faith being brought to general center so watch out for those uh, as they come out if you're not subscribed to the channel subscribe now click that bell to make sure that you get those videos as soon as they come out and i will see you next week bye